In 2008, already over 130 cases of measles, the biggest outbreak since 1996. And the CDC is blaming these pockets of children where there are communities where parents are choosing not to vaccinate their kids. And this is a real concern for us. Right, this is probably one of the biggest uh, vaccine questions because the, the measles vaccine, well, actually the MMR, which is part of the measles, that's pr probably one of the biggest controversial vaccines. Maybe 10 years ago, this thing with autism came up, but that really seems to have settled down a lot. You know, most of the evidence linking measles with autism is kind of settled down, and most of the doctors and scientists agree that it probably isn't the major cause. But I still have a lot of parents coming into my office saying, I'm, I, I want to get vaccines, but I don't want to get that one. And I say, Okay, well, let's talk about it. Let's, what are the risks of measles? Most people don't know. One out of every thousand kids get, that get measles will die. It's, it can be a fatal illness. It is very, very contagious. Tell, tell us what the measles are, because most people have never seen it. Many times it's just a, it's a mild illness. You get this terrible rash, rash and a fever and terrible cold symptoms, and you cough. just, child is miserable, cough. But in some kids, it can be much, much more severe than that and fatal. That's a great point. We do have a guest. Barbara Lowe Fisher is here from the National Vaccine Information Center. I want you to give us your opinion. Is this measles outbreak something that you look at and think, well, whoa, we need to be careful here about the message we're sending to moms because if they don't vaccinate, we could have a measles outbreak and it could become an epidemic where, like years ago, four million people are getting the measles. Well, I mean, I have to come from the perspective of a parent who has a vaccine-injured child. I mean, in 1980, I took my bright, healthy, precocious little two-and-a-half-year-old boy in for a fourth DPT shot, and within hours of that shot, I witnessed him suffer a convulsion, a collapse shock, a state of unconsciousness, and he was eventually diagnosed with minimal brain damage, including multiple learning disabilities and attention deficit disorder. With regard to measles, 131 cases of measles out of 300 million people is not an epidemic. We have a 98% vaccination rate. It's not an rate. epidemic because kids are being vaccinated. Okay, we have more than tripled the numbers of doses of vaccines we're giving our children in the last quarter century. At the same time, we have seen children become disabled and chronically ill. One in six child in America is now learning disabled. One in nine has asthma. One in 100 to 150 develops autism. One in 450 has diabetes. That's the big question. Why are so many highly vaccinated children so sick? And let's quickly explain how a vaccine works. The vaccine, basically, it's an injection with maybe a killed virus in there or a killed bacteria. So the, that killed or part of the bacteria basically fools the immune system into thinking the child just got the illness. So that the immune memory, immune system's memory can then be ready for the next time the child gets exposed to the real illness and can fight it off. And so that's why we as doctors love vaccinations because they prevent huge outbreaks of illnesses that, that can kill children. But explain to us why you feel so passionately. Okay, the first sentence I have to say is I, I'm not out to ban vaccines. I don't, I believe in the concept of eradicating infectious diseases, sure. Right now, the one size fits all for everybody, not working. A vaccination is a medical procedure that should have questions prior to getting a vaccination, such as, is your child currently ill? Is your child currently taking antibiotics? Does your family have a history of autoimmune disease? Is your child allergic to eggs, MMR, cultured in an egg medium? None of these questions are ever asked. A five pound preemie gets the same vaccination as a 10 pound full termer. They need to be individualized. And explain why you because, feel this way and why you decided okay. not to vaccinate your young, youngest children. So I have, I have three children. My oldest, I was kind of the sacrificial lamb. He was vaccinated and had a huge amount of thimerosal, huge amount of mercury. Um, and after he had the MMR and the chickenpox vaccination on the same day, we never saw him again for three years. Never if, saw him again, meaning he, he, he developed autism. Wasn't, I, I, wasn't he lost you. language. He lost social skills. He lost bowel control. He became very sick within hours of vaccination. So I, you know, I held his hand over, over the proverbial fire. He got burned. Don't ask me to line up my other two children to get burned again. What kind of parent would I be? And that's really the discussion we want to focus on here is the, the requirement that you have to vaccinate State your children in, in certain states. Jim, correct me if I'm wrong, but for the most part, vaccinations are required. Right, you know, some of the other states will have religious exemptions, not just personal exemptions, but yeah, you're, some states you're stuck. You can't go to public schools. You may have to, a lot of parents have to homeschool. And, and that in but itself that creates fair? a pocket. Like, what if I have a familial history to a negative response to vaccination? I'm literally supposed to vaccinate or educate, like I have to choose, education or vaccination? Tough. 
Should I be mandated by the and government? I, I will say no, you shouldn't, because I do have a few families in my practice that have a fam some sort of familial tendency towards reactions to certain vaccines, the live vaccines, and they're, on, the in, they're yeah. in studies in a place like UCLA, but that's that's not all families, just, just, just a few families. That's why I'm against mandatory vaccines. I think somebody should be have the right to say no. Here's the thing, there, there's a lot of studies out there. Some of them show zero, and let's just talk about autism for, okay. at first. Um, some of them show no link, and some of them show a possible link. Me as a physician, I stayed with an open mind when this uh, the autism vaccine debate first came online, and I, I had a lot of parents scared and, and asking me questions, and I, I kind of went along with it. And, but over the years, over the last several years, the data has shown, okay, it probably isn't just the vaccines. What is it? We still don't sure. know. I believe there's, there's other environmental there. triggers. Many kids sure. get, get these illnesses without getting vaccinated. That, but what a great study. If Offit mm -hmm. and Gerberding and a bunch of other people would go, let's study the vaccinated versus the non-vaccinated, mm -hmm. no one is doing that study. Sure. That study needs to be done. I, I do agree with you in terms of the one size does not fit all. Well, one size um, fits all doesn't work in medicine in general. Right. Exactly. Right. So why are and, we doing that with vaccines? Everyone exactly. wants doctors to have all the answers, but you can't have all the answers when there's an emerging new problem. Mm -hmm. and, and this new illness that's on the rise, something like autism, where there's absolutely no evidence that it's from vaccines. I would love to protect my child from infectious diseases. Mm -hmm. I would love to walk into your office and feel completely confident. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'd like this shot, this shot, this shot, and my child's gonna be fine. The fact is, I walked in, he got shots, and he didn't speak to me for three years. Dr. Altman, I'm curious your thoughts, because I have to tell you, I, I tend to agree with Dr. Sears that Hey, if you're a mom and you're educated and you don't want your kids to be vaccinated, you should have that choice if you're making an informed decision, in my opinion. The problem is, is that these diseases are still out there. And when we have pockets of kids that aren't immunized or infants that are too young to be immunized or immunocompromised children that can't be immunized, these diseases spread very quickly and we see a lot of children dying. Two things that I do want to point out because I do find that moms, when they come to my office, they don't understand this, is that vaccines are always changing and being improved thanks to vaccine technology. The vaccines we give today are very different from the vaccines that we gave 30 years ago. And you explained how vaccines work. There's those little immunologic particles in them or immunogenic particles. And all the vaccines together today have less of those than one vaccine did 30 years ago. So that's something that parents don't understand. You forgive me if I don't trust the pharmaceutical industry. I'm sorry, their bottom line is the dollar. My bottom line is my child. I don't trust the pharmaceutical and industry. And let me say this, I will guarantee you Dr. Altman and Dr. Sears' bottom line is saving child's lives. Exactly. I will guarantee exactly. you that they have then nothing. Then fall all over yourselves to make vaccines safer, and That's I will be the point. first one at your door to sign my kid up for inoculation. I, I totally agree with you. I think vaccines have gotten safer, like you said. You know, even the vaccine that harmed your child, that's, that's been improved, Barbara. Like any other drug, they carry a risk that's greater for some than others. Informed consent has been the central ethical principle mm -hmm. in the practice of modern medicine. Vaccines should be not separated out from the informed consent ethic. And I think it's a human right to be able to decide what you are willing to risk your life for or your child's life for. I think it's so important. I, I sit down with parents if they're being vaccinated or not. Parents want to know. They want to be informed. And, and I, they want to know, what are my risks for catching an illness? What are my risks for having being harmed by a vaccine? And between 1991 and, and 01, out of 1.9 billion doses of vaccines given, there was 18,000 adverse, you know, bad, bad outcomes. One in 5,500 doses of vaccines will cause a problem. That sounds pretty bad, but now what are the kids' risks at catching one of these illnesses? 85,000 kids a year will catch some sort of vaccine preventable illness out of 50 million kids. That comes to about one in 600 kids a year will catch some sort of vaccine preventable illness, and that's each year. So, But doctor, we still need to go back to this question, this big question. As we have suppressed so many infectious diseases in childhood, we have seen this corresponding rise in chronic disease and disability. And I think it's a fair question for parents to ask. And scientists and doctors at, in the federal health agencies have got to answer this for us. Have we traded something? Let me say one last thing. The life expectancy in this country is longer than it's ever been, and it's because of things like vaccinations. Now, you have your fears, and I understand that, but the reason you do is because you have had a terrible tragedy in your life. 
but there are a lot of people still alive today because of vaccinations, and we, we need to recognize that. And whatever side you take, we can all agree we are after the same goal. We want to keep our kids healthy. The bottom line is talk to your doctors, make an informed decision. The overwhelming majority of pediatricians in this country strongly support vaccinations.